I have a chronic illness. I will be dealing with this for the rest of my life. My story really starts when I was born. My mom said I was a fidgety kid and her most colic, difficult kid. I think that I experienced anxiety actually the moment that I was born because I never really remember being without angst as a kid. I used to read the biographies of the saints and I felt that to suffer like that meant that you were a chosen child of God, that God had chosen you to suffer because he loved you so much. And I remember clinging to those stories of faith and those biographies of saints as a young kid because that somehow made sense of the feelings that I had. I would explain to my mom, I just called them feelings, and I would say, Mom, I'm getting those feelings again, I'm getting those feelings again. When I was a teenager, I struggled with both eating disorders and alcoholism. I think I wanted to numb my pain through either controlling my body with food or with the lack of food. I think that an eating disorder is really perfectionism and that's how my depression really exhibited itself as, as this sort of distorted perfectionism of um, retaining calories. My alcohol I think was a sort of numbness. I remember the first time that I experienced my first buzz because it felt like I had found the quiet, the quiet car on a train. When I got to St. Mary's College, I finally got on antidepressants and it, there was a huge relief. My mom said I smiled for the first time and she didn't know how long. She had noticed a real big change in me. And I did too. For the first time I could, you know, concentrate on my studies. I could tell a joke. I could relax. I did really well actually on the antidepressant combination um, for 10 years and so I didn't really think anything about it until after my second child was born. That was really when I plummeted into my most severe depression. So I did what I had done before and I worked with many doctors. Um, I kept on going to doctors to try to see what was the matter and finally found the one that I'm working with now. She was the seventh doctor I worked with and she's marvelous. She diagnosed me with bipolar disorder number two and was able, again, to give me the literature to help me um, know what I can do for myself and to know when I can't do it by myself. And the, the longer that I'm in recovery, the more people that I've met with the same diagnosis that I am that are just like me, struggling, you know, pretty much on a daily basis, but able to live very full lives. I'm very lucky in the fact that I have a very supportive husband who gets it. You know, he really gets that this is an illness. Eric was really, really with me. I mean, he was there more than any other person. And he, he took off three months of his job to be there with me. He was supportive and yet he was also the nudge that helped me get the right help that I needed. I would get support. I really didn't want to bring in any help from my kids, um, and I didn't want any household help. It's better for your kids if you take the help and get yourself better so that you can be there for your kids rather than trying to be a martyr and prolong the illness. One of my first therapists constantly reminded me to go through it, not around it. I really had to go through the heart of the storm and to pick up the tools one by one that I would be needing the rest of my life, that I feel like I will need the rest of my life. There's an element of the disease that will always be with you, and so you can't wait for the storm to be over. You, you really have to learn how to dance in the rain. You have to treat it as sort of a, a friend that's always gonna be with you. Thank you.